penalty. And my main claim is that <clears throat> the death penalty has a negative effect on the United States. Okay, so when you think about people that get sent to the death row, you imagine criminals who have done harsh crimes who deserve to be punished in ways that they did to the people. Um, but what if I told you that people could be sitting in a cell for 22 years before they actually get punished for what they have done? Um, so the death penalty has a negative effect on the United States because it costs the country too much money, the process of executing inmates takes too long, and it does not deter crime. Okay, so for my first secondary claim, the cost of the death penalty is very high and it costs the country too much money. So according to the Death Penalty Information Center, since 1978, the death penalty has cost California over $4 billion and also according to a study done in the Sacramento Bee in March 28th of 1988, it suggested that California would have saved $90 million per year if it were to abolish the death penalty. Um, also according to the Death Penalty Information Center, in Maryland, since the death penalty was reenacted in the state in 1978, it has cost the state $186 million for five executions alone, averaging about $37.2 million per execution. Um, and finally, from the death, also from the Death Penalty Information Center, in Texas, the death penalty cases cost more than non-capital cases. Um, each death penalty case in that state has cost taxpayers about $2.3 million, um, and that is about three times the cost of imprisoning someone in a single cell at the highest security level for 40 years. For my second secondary claim, the process of executing and punishing an inmate with capital punishment takes too long that it becomes an ineffective deterrent. Um, according to an article in the Day Connecticut, the process averages about 18 to 23 years and it's also costing money to have somebody in a cell waiting to get punished before they actually get executed. Um, in June of eight, I mean, 1984, a man of 24 years old went on a mass and killing spree here in Southern California and he brutally killed 13 people. He would rape them and then do harsh things to their body, to their bodies, and then before he actually killed them, he would have them sing like satanic songs. Um, he was arrested after 14 months, and according to an article by the Fox News that was published in 2010, his killing did earn him a spot on the California death row soon enough, but even after these past 23 years since that had since that has happened, um, he has been sitting in his cell and is now older, older than some of the people he killed back in 1984. And if that process keeps taking as long as it has, he's not going to be put to death until he is 71 years old. So as you can see, this is some punished criminals for what they do when they're supposed to, but it takes so long that it becomes ineffective. Um, for my last, Secondary claim, capital punishment, also known as the death penalty, fails to deter crime. According to an article produced by the University of Florida News, among the experts, there is overwhelming consensus that the death penalty never has been, is not, and never could be a deterrent to homicide over and above long imprisonment. And also according to Michael Braidlett, chairman of USF's sociology department, and a long-time researcher of the death penalty, if you haven't deterred somebody by life, you're not going to deter them by death either. So, to wrap things up, as you can see, the death penalty is only hurting the country because it is costing taxpayers too much money. It takes too long for the process to be carried through that it becomes ineffective and it does not deter crime. Thank
All right, a uh, very solid statement of what the proposition is. The secondary points are clearly labeled. As you get to each one of them, it's easy to tell where you are in the course of the argument. I thought you had a pretty good explanation on each point. I do think that you need to tell us what standard is enough or co too costly. Uh, it's not just enough to tell us how much we spend, for instance, but for example, what do we sacrifice because of that spending? Is there lost money that goes to that doesn't go to law enforcement that might have been more effectively presented? Because if, if it might be worth it for us to spend you know, $2.3 million to get rid of some of these people, uh, there might be a moral justification for spending that amount of money. Uh, what you could do is maybe develop an argument, for, especially for a place like California, which spends uh, uh, the money, you know, and we are... We are tight on our budgets. Stuff gets cut, especially law enforcement material gets cut. If we weren't spending the money on, you know, uh, extending the death penalty, then maybe there would be something practical there that you could use as a justification for why it's too much. Otherwise, it's just, it's almost a value argument says we spend a lot of money, but there's no explanation about why that is a problem. And, uh, Somebody says it's never enough money to get rid of something like that. You know, if you, if you were sick, you wouldn't care how much it costs you to get well. Well, society doesn't care how much it costs them to get rid of the disease that we have. You know, I mean, that's basically the argument that you, I think you'd get back on that. Um, on the uh, point about it being a deterrent, oh, well, the second point on the time issue, I do think that there's a, a good argument built in here that says one of the reasons that the cost goes up is because not only do we um, take a long time to execute people, but of course we spend all the money that we would have spent keeping them in prison for life, and then we execute them. So it's basically doubling the cost that we would have had otherwise. I thought you had a nice argument on that one. And that, once again, I think that's another place where you could make the argument that there's some impact of doing that. Resources or time or energy or something along those lines that would be problematic. Uh, the third point on deterrence, uh, you've got a couple of quotes here. There's a consensus statement and then a conclusion statement. Both of them seem you know, very conclusionary. There's not any explanation by either of the people that you're quoting there, and I think that would have strengthened the argument if there was some explanation about what kind of research they'd done or why there is this consensus. Um, or the one guy who says there's no proof that life is, you know, any less of a deterrent than death is. Okay, well, what information has he looked at to reach that conclusion? We don't know, and I thought that was a little problematic. All right, thank you.